Yo, what is up, YouTube, man? In NBA 2K22, Chase Down Artist was a little bit overpowered. You could put it on bronze on a minimum wingspan, six foot three guard, and you would start getting blocks like crazy. This year, it's a bit underpowered, but it's still a decent badge. You see, it's pretty easy to get it on gold. You only need a 75 block. But to get actual chase down animations, it's going to take a bit more than just having chase down artists on gold or hall of fame. You definitely want to have anchor as well. The badge anchor is going to give you the ability to block more shots, which in return is going to give you more chase down blocks. Having a nice vertical rating as well goes a long way, as well as having a decent wingspan. I have max wingspan on a lot of my builds, and I have some builds with shorter wingspan, and I will say the longer wingspan builds get way more chase down blocks compared to my other builds. The only other thing that helps out with chase down blocks, if you have lock or rim takeover, lock takeover is boosting your vertical, it's boosting your speed, just your physicals, so that in itself is going to help you get more chase down blocks, and rim protecting takeover is going to boost the ability that your player actually blocks the shot, especially stuff blocks, so obviously if you're getting more blocks in general, some of those are going to be snatch blocks. Overall, would I recommend having chase down artist on your build? I absolutely would. Now, I think putting it on bronze is not enough anymore. You see, I got a nice contact dunk right here. That was a standing contact dunk, but it's almost like I was moving while doing it. This gameplay is just some background for you guys while I talk. But like I was saying, I think having chase down artists at a higher level, silver, gold, Hall of Fame, if you can get it, is going to be a big difference from bronze. Whereas last year, maybe bronze and Hall of Fame didn't feel that much different. Not only having chase down artists on, but if you can put anchor on, even if you just get anchor on bronze, it's going to go a long way in helping you block more shots, and that is going to be more chase down animations. I would argue having defensive anchor on bronze is even more important than having chase down artists on Hall of Fame if you're strictly trying to get blocks. Even with doing all of that though, you're not going to get a chase down block animation every single time you think you will. In NBA 2K22, Chase Down Artist was overpowered. You could pretty much play it to get a Chase Down block every single time. That is not the case in NBA 2K23. Even if you get a Chase Down block, the possession, the four, and you do the exact same thing the next possession, this time you may not get the block. Blocks are just a bit more rare in NBA 2K23. Now, that doesn't mean you should abandon block rating entirely. Just because blocks aren't as overpowered, that doesn't mean you should just have block rating as low as you can go and just worry about getting steals because the intimidation factor goes a long way if you can just get one chase down on somebody they're going to be thinking a little bit differently the next time they end up going to the hoop you see dunk meter right here end up missing that let me know what you guys think of chase down artist i know a very popular opinion was it doesn't work at all i myself i feel like i've gotten like 50 to 100 chase down blocks this year I still use the badge at a high level, and I feel like I can be a little bit gambly on defense because if they beat me, there is a decent chance that I'll get a chase down block, even though, you know, last year, I'm not going to lie, I would always let people drive past me because the best thing I could do on defense was to let them so I could get the chase down block. It was pretty wild. Your player does not quite get up the same way you used to right here. Seven foot two on the fast break. If you guys didn't know, if you flick your right joystick up and then you hold it up, you will activate a flashy dunk. And when you do flashy dunks, you do boost your takeover. You see my slashing takeover went up like crazy on that possession. That, you know, it's something that's a little bit, you know, you're like, why would I do all of that on the fast break when I can just hold down X? But it does have a competitive advantage if you guys want to try it out. When it comes to defense as well, if you're a build that doesn't get great block rating, you actually can play defense very well with steals. Whenever people drive on you, if you just try to hit them with the pickpocket animation whenever they're going up for a dunk, you can strip them. That can be your way to protect yourself. Block is expensive once you start making those small guard builds. That's why a lot of people end up making six foot eight, six foot nine, because you can have a high block rating, high interior defense. You don't really have a weakness as these smaller players do. Apollo right here with the fading three. I mean, these six nines, they can do it all. I mean, what can you do to stop them? That's why I do like to play on my taller big, some other builds. You know, I like to make it a little bit more challenging for myself. I probably should make a six foot nine build with like a you know, the demigod, maybe slashing takeover, 93 contact dunks with great defense. We shall see. Laker dots me right here. Of course, I get fouled immediately. They don't want to see the giant dribble. But it is all right because as you can see, 
I end up just kind of sitting baseline right here. Laker goes in for the contact dunk. If he ends up lobbing out of that, it is a pretty nice play that we have made up. A lot of people struggle to play with an inside if they're a slasher, but it's pretty easy to read the defense. I mean, if they go to help, then you have a wide open center in the paint. If they don't, they will end up just standing there watching their other guy get dunked on. Why they feel like they could have done something about it. Apollo with the shock rating takeover. Dots me in the corner right here. Unfortunately, I was going to go for an insane contact dunk. Ends up bumping the ball out of my hands. They're back on the fast break. We get the steal though. Coming back on the other end. Gives the ball to me. This guy's trying to get bumpy on me. Go past him. Nice little dunk animation right here. 7-18. And check this out. They are going to come down court. The man has some space on Laker. Goes right to the hoop. I end up dropping down. Not a chase down block. Not a block. But a nice contest by the both of us. Paulo with the three to end the game. Let me know if you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys want to drop a like and subscribe. Of course, I do appreciate it, man. This is Tony. I will catch you guys in the next one. I'm out. Peace.